Hey guys, so I thought for today uh, I might load Bodhi Linux into a virtual machine and take a look at it. Now I took a look at it on this channel what was probably a couple of years ago um, and I just wanted to see how far it had come. So I checked out the website, downloaded it, installed it in a virtual machine and just sort of played around with it for a couple of hours and I just thought I might go through some of the things I found interesting. Now I'm just going to point out from the offset that Bodhi Linux does a number of things significantly differently to most Linux distributions so I'm unlikely to, I, I'm only going to scratch the surface here. In fact they, they have a sizable getting started guide to sort of get you to familiar with it. Um, it's based on uh, in the Enlightenment desktop, but because the Enlightenment desktop's development, um, I don't know, like they started implementing features and never finished them and all this kind of stuff. So from what I understand, this Moksha desktop, which is what Bodhi Linux is based on, is effectively a cleaned up version of the Enlightenment desktop. And I think the Bodhi Linux uh, team took it on themselves to develop this desktop. It has an app center, wiki, all that kind of stuff as well. So let's uh let's take a look at it the current version of course the version we're looking at today is 4.1.0 of course now the first thing you may notice um which is the first thing i noticed is that it's using the the arc theme so you can see here there's the this is the browser it comes with the midori browser and it uh, it comes with the arc theme you can see the uh you can see the arc the arc theme there it looks good looks real good i'm not sure what the fonts are but um but yeah, I do like the icon theme. Uh, one thing which I I do notice is that the the icon the um the icon theme up here has dark icons on a dark background. Um, so I don't know if that's like using, you know, like a, an icon theme for a light theme on it. Um, it like obviously it's still visible and and um, and useful. Um, but it just seems like a, a bit of a mismatch there. So anyway, this is the browser. It comes with the Midori browser. There are a couple of distributions which have been known to do that. The only one I can think of off the top of my head is um, Elementary. And in fact, actually, I think they may have uh, decided against that in their newer releases, but I could be wrong. So I also have, where do I have here? The um, Now this is basically the welcome screen, right? Um, and when you get started, it sort of just opens up a browser with, with this screen for you, which gives you some of the some of the basics. Um, it gives you an FAQ, which is quite useful. It tells you how to use the quick launcher. Um, it tells you about installing software and connecting to the internet. So it it, it, it has you know it has a getting started guide, um, and then it sort of shows you about the the you know the Moksha desktop. Uh, that has a few gadgets in here. Uh, it has the network manager that we we all know and love. Um, I recognize it from Manjaro XFCE, but obviously this is the NM dash applet that you see in so many distributions these days. It has, it seems to have a pretty good um, volume um, adjuster as well. Like if you had USB headsets and all that kind of stuff, it looks like you could adjust the volume or mute stuff just straight up from the menu, which is uh, which is really good. I think in, in XFCE, it just gives you the one master volume slider, which is fine, but uh, a little more of a comprehensive volume control is always pretty good, especially if you've got USB headphones and stuff. And it's got a clip man here. Never been a fan of clipboard managers myself. I've always considered them a significant security risk because you've put all kinds of personal information on the clipboard without even thinking. The fact is that the control C, control V shortcut is to most people practically subconscious at this stage. It's very, very habitual, which means that you can expect a significant amount of sensitive data to be copy and pasted simply because people aren't registering the connection in their brain. So I've never really, and you know, so I've never really thought that clipboard managers were really ever that useful and always a big security risk. And it's got, look at that little animation there at the bottom between the two uh, desktops. So that's kind of, you see, um, it definitely feels like a more polished desktop than it did last time I uh, I came around. But I gotta say, for a desktop that does rely heavily on doing things in like a different way, um, having to sort of like read a guide to get to grips with the desktop environment isn't necessarily, you know, like, like sort of that almost in, in and of itself is an admission that it's not as intuitive as it could be. And, you know, there are a significant number of intuitive desktops out there. So, um, so the general philosophy behind this distribution seems to be that it installs a very basic desktop. Now there is a version, um, I think it's called an app pack version, where they do have a significant amount of pre-installed software here. Um, but most of this stuff, you know, like these menus are very, very small. You, you, the, the idea is that you basically, it gives you the most basic elements of, of, um, of a daily driver operating system, and then you install the software on top of that, saving disk space and, um, and keeping your system nice and clean. 
Um, which I respect. I, I think I wish there were more distributions that decided just not to include software and um, and and, uh, and and just let the uh, the end user work that out for themselves. Not necessarily for newbie friendly distros, but you know, it's like something like the uh, not quite the Archway. The Archway is really bare bones, but like somewhere in between, somewhere where it just gives you a very base operating system. I think there's a Lubuntu image that does that. That's that's this like you know a bare bare bones install uh, with X. MPV and VLC, I just installed these just to see what the installation process was like. As you can see, Qt apps seem to look pretty well here since VLC Media is a Qt app. So let's have a look at the uh, installation process. Um, this is the FAQ. Uh, one thing about the FAQ I did find a little bit amusing. Um, here, yeah, it goes, uh, why does um, Bodhi Linux uh, use Midori Web Browser? Um, when polled our users, we found that um, there was a three-way tie between Firefox, the older, I, I assume, the LTS version of Firefox, and Chromium. So instead so instead of um, choosing one of those that would have left approximately two-thirds of our users dissatisfied and needing to install another browser anyway, we went in a totally different direction and made it so that everyone would have to install a browser. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But of course... Um, I don't know. It's a curious choice. I can understand they went it for the lightweight um, elements, and almost it, it does seem that like Midori is sort of like this base level browser, and they almost expect you to install either Firefox or Chromium. Like they, it, it seems like reading between the lines of this FA, this FAQ entry was basically we gave you Fedori because it was like the most lightweight one, and if you want anything else, install it yourself. Um, and also it uses Midori because it, well, I mean, I, I think any browser could do that. It's just the XDG apps thing. So anyway, um, where is the installer thing? So it can get, yeah, this is, like, this is all sort of out of the welcome screen for the most part, isn't it? Or is this, no, this is the Midori browser. Um, but you can get to the app installer by going to, let's have a look here, Bodhi App Center. There we go. It's just going to load up. So this isn't a browser, but this is definitely a browser. Okay, that didn't, didn't make any sense. This is, I think, this is a Midori browser, but it's like the the um, embedded application version of it. But it kind of still looks like a browser. I don't know. Maybe Electron might have been a better way to go. But then again, Electron's really really heavy, and it seems that Bodhi has, it sort of is intending to be specifically lightweight here, even at the expense of perhaps. Um, should we say idiot level usability? I mean, I'm still like it's still easy enough to use for an intermediate user. It's just not idiot proof. I think is is kind of the point that I'm I'm making here. So let's install something. Let's install a PDF reader. They tend to what we've got here. So it gives you a choice of things like PDF readers. It's not the longest choice, but it is a curated choice, and I do like curated choices. So there's some games. What could, I'm just going to show you. So sort of, I just want to show you the the install process. Let's play on Linux, something that's a bit a uh, bit smaller. What kind of games do they have? Let's play on Linux. Frozen Bubble. Could have added my um Steam to that. That uh, that seems that seems uh, I don't know. Um, torrent clients. Let's get ourselves a torrent client. K torrent or transmission. Let's go transmission. That seems to be pretty. I don't know, like transmission. Like no, there was never a buzz about transmission. I never felt when it when it became popular, but um, it did seem to just be habitually the default torrent uh, client for like most distributions, and most people just sort of accepted that. Like um, a BitTorrent clients, you know, the pragmatic, functional, utilitarian pieces of software. To be honest, for the most part, you can get away with just using what comes with your standard dis distro. You don't seem to, you know, I don't find I use it enough to really care about the UI or, or anything like that. And most BitTorrent clients now have, you know, all the features necessary. So anyway, if you click install, it gives you the pseudo, you know, it asks you for the uh, for the password there. And then uh, it gets installed. So it works. It's It's a smooth enough process, but it does feel a little clunky coming from the browser. Um, again, I would I would have felt like I don't know, like I would have felt like Electron would have been like an, a natural uh, place to embed this application. But then again, Electron heavyweight, you know. Um, okay, yeah, let's install. But I got to admit, this is definitely an improvement, and I you know I am being a little bit sort of more critical about it than I usually am. But I got to say, really, you know, as as a as a distribution, if you want something basic and straightforward and get up and go. Um, it seems snappy. It seems quick. It seems like it kind of does what you want to do. Like some of these bells and whistles, like the shelves, 
Um, I had, you know, seen, and there's some like nomenclature and terminology, um, like for example, you know, Bodie Builder, you know, and sh uh, you know, and there there is a lot of um, expressions that seem to that, that, that seem to um, what am I trying to say here? Like there are a lot of expressions that seem unique to Bodhi Linux that that perhaps someone just passing by wouldn't necessarily appreciate. Um, I get rid of the FAQs now, but to its credit, um, I've got it up here. Uh, Bodhi has been on the top end of DistroWatch. It is at thirty-three. It has been in the top ten before, but that's still a pretty high up rank. If you if you look at you know you got uh, AntiX there, Zubuntu down there. It, you know, it, it has maintained a following for a long time now. So um, there are a number of people, whenever I talk about Bodhi Linux, there are a number of people that are very quick to point out that I, I don't get the the sort of the, the overarching uh, philosophy around it. And, you know, maybe that's my fault and maybe that's something that I'm I'm not getting. Because um, it certainly has, a, you know, it has a significant legion of, of loyal users. So anyway, we've installed... Um, that so if we go to applications internet transmission and that's the install process so it is actually and then yeah again another good looking application dark icon theme though again uh, that's easy to fix in fact in the software center there is even icon sets and themes see this is how i think themes should should, should be done i think the vast majority of end users that i've you know that i work with that, that aren't software enthusiasts don't care about the theme as long as it looks vaguely professional but um having a nice set of installable themes there is good it's good especially if you're on like you know on a, on a desktop you're developing yourself and therefore themes aren't going to be readily available so so well you know well done for getting making sure that's covered um but this again obviously it looks like a very limited this is like a, a software boutique not massively dissimilar to the the ubuntu mate one um Obviously, this one is significantly like less polished, put through a browser and so forth, but it works and it does the job. Um, but you can, of course, because this is based on Ubuntu, um, you can, of course, drop down to the command line and you can install stuff that is in the Ubuntu repositories just as easily. In fact, let's uh, let's install key pass x uh, a great password manager by the way i highly recommend it for those of you that want to do that kind of thing um that wants to keep uh, password management offline so i'm just going to install that up here Do -do -do -do. but this is this is a this is a, a, a marked improvement over the last one but i think the last time i the last one i did review was a beta version so i'm definitely skewed there and i like the arc theme arc theme looks beautiful so let's see how well i haven't installed anything from the command line yet so what do we have here is it going to be it's an accessory so it's, it's in the menu and it looks fine there you go so you can install stuff just as well from the command line did you really you know did they need to put in a software manager a package manager probably not probably i i would imagine the kind of audience that Bodhi linux developers are, are expecting of people that would probably be just as comfortable with apt apt is a great command line application it's the easiest thing easiest command line application in the world to use almost figuratively um uh, and you can yeah so so i would probably just drop into the command line update as well uh, one thing i do like about it is that it does seem to be the kind of desktop where it doesn't have all these pop-ups that try and reintroduce you to an application it does seem that there is this degree of get up and go about it even if some of the shelves and these these plug-in gadgets can be a little clunky with with um odd nomenclature but all in all um I think my original my original criticism of it was that it like it didn't seem to sort of step away from um it, it you know like I, I I didn't see the niche that it filled and I think I'm starting to now I think it does make a sense that you know like this is this is almost bare bones with x um you know so if you if you if you are setting up like a specific purpose machine a machine that's only job is is open broadcaster software you know to broadcast something or or it's, it's only job is to to um be a remote backup or something like that um then then it, and you want to just set up something quick and easy Bodhi linux you know it's based on long-term support so you're not forever updating it install it install the applications on top of it that you need get it running you know and i think this is probably quite a good um 
desktop environment and 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 uh, distribution for light for for bringing back lightweight machines. It seems more lightweight than Lubuntu. So there is that. There is you know, there is a possibility that this could be like the lightest popular Ubuntu uh, respin. So I think I've covered everything that I kind of want to. The you know installing applications is is fine but clunky. The update manager again, it's like fine, but you might as well just drop into the command line. I think they've they've put in a very basic one there for people that just don't want to bother with the command line perhaps. Just give to give a few options out there, but it is expected that you're supposed to like make your own options and, and make your own choose your own way. But overall, yeah, like I mean it looks nice, doesn't it? For such a lightweight desktop with the, you know, little animations. It does have a it does have a an ear an ear of um Ice WM about it, JWM kind of window manager -y kind of things, but it's it's fast, it's snappy, and I yeah, I gotta say, actually, yeah, I, I would say that I am impressed, despite despite the that uh, the, the criticisms that, that 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 I that I have against it. It's it's impressed me, you know. I think if you're looking for something significantly lightweight and um and something that respects you the choice, well, you know. There's that there. I don't think I'm necessarily going to be in a hurry to to install it on a on a on a on a, 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 a workstation machine, but I might stick it on a like a crappy old netbook and see how well it does. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts, of course, down in the comment section below. Uh, thank you very much for watching. This is just, of course, a quick run through. Um, but yeah, if you've got um, you know a spare couple of hours and a virtual machine at the go, give it a spin. It's worth a look. So that's about it for me today. Um, until next time. I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.